Cash is not expensive. Now, I mean, one thing that you have to remember in Cashew is that, yes, our fees might be somewhat higher than, I mean, now we're talking about Cashew prepaid this, this. compared to, to Visa and MasterCard, I assume. Now, one thing you have in cash is you have a guaranteed payment. I mean, you have no chargeback risks, which I think you should value to, to uh, quite some extent. The other thing is we have no setup fees. We have no annual fees. There is no maintenance fees. We, you only pay per successful transaction. And yes, I mean, you can maybe consider it to be high, but uh, even if you compare it with, with a credit card transaction, we're still competitive in pricing, I would say. All right. Any other questions? questions? Yeah. Uh, so uh, I think this is a good question. It might help us all kind of understand a little bit better where this cost is coming from. Is it is it mainly a result of your operating costs that you need to kind of keep up these margins? Or is this more a subject of this is what's available and we can be, you know, so we can charge the margins we choose to charge? If that makes sense. Like, does Cashew, or this applies to all of them, uh, does Cashew need to be that expensive in order for you to have a viable business? Or is it simply expensive because it's, it's the only thing available for a... So I guess the question is, and I think it holds true for Network International too, is like, what are like the commercial structures of online payments? Like, is it, like how does that business work? Now, <laughs> I guess I, I should never have re revealed any fees here <laughs> because, uh, but I mean, what would you consider to be a, 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 a uh, what should I say, a uh, market fee for a payment transaction? I guess the question. Uh, I guess the question is, what's a fair margin? What would you consider a fair margin for you to have a viable business and encourage ecos an ecosystem of e-commerce? So, can I come down because I caught here? I guess yeah. what's a fair margin? Like I'm asking, I what mean would be a fair, fair margin for you to operate and then have everyone else be able to? Okay. Great. A fair, mar fair margin, I mean, it's, it's I, I can't answer that question because, I mean, we consider our pricing to be fair. And if we go back to the cashew uh, prepaid uh, fee structure, I, when I reveal the prices when I say 3 4%, it's, I mean, it's a general, uh, uh, what should I say, pricing, but Depending on industry, depending on volume, we are of course prepared to, to negotiate the prices because at the end of the day, I mean, each merchant, uh, each merchant actually I mean, uh, generates a workload for us. And if that workload is, uh, it's, and that workload is more related to the merchant rather than the number of transactions. So if we can get a high number of transactions uh, for the same merchant. We are, of course, prepared to go down in price. But, uh, I mean, it's... Uh, the, the question was not for me, but uh, I want to defend my friend Martin. It's depending on the volume of transaction. And basically, someone has to make money. I mean, when you look at the P&L of banks, banks throughout the world make something like sometimes 10%, 20% profit. And they are banks and they take you something like 0.5 or 1% of fee per transaction because they process so many transactions that they can make money out of it. When you come to a very early stage market where the volume of transaction is pretty low, that's quite normal that the level of margin is pretty high. Otherwise, companies like Cashew or other companies doesn't make any profit and if they don't make any profit, then they don't exist and they don't offer payment. And you're back to point one because if credit card penetration is low and Cashew does not exist, what are you left with? Shall we dare risk one more question with the audio back there? Oh, sorry. Thank you for I don't know if the range will work. She has a um, Hi. My question is actually um, maybe a bit technical, and if you don't mind, can I ask two? Um, we're actually looking to see if any of you payment gateways can offer, offer reoccurring subscription-based um, 
API models. And um, also, this one can be a little bit technical, but how transparent are you with failed orders? Um, with large volume transactions, we see a, an increase in those. And usually, it's either a bank security or slash shipping billing addresses, um, you know, different countries, and that's not allowed. And how transparent is your system in showing this to the merchant and allowing them to, you know, uh, increase their conversions in that case? Okay. Thanks. So the question is basically, do any of your payment gateways support recurring payments, recurring billing? And how transparent are they in terms of seeing not just success or failure, but also if there's been like 70 credit cards tried on account or, you know, failed authorizations or declines from banks and whatever. So transparency from an admin perspective, I think, from transactions, but also if you support recurring billing as well too. Anybody? Cybersource, I think, does. But. Uh, the answer is yes. <laughs> So, I mean, we can offer all of those. I mean, we've a network offers a number of payment gateway platforms. Um, and seriously, the answer is yes to a number of those questions. Also, with regards to the fraud monitoring reporting, it's very comprehensive, very customizable in terms of particular requirements of the merchants. So, from that point of view, we can definitely do that. With regards to recurring payments, et cetera, et cetera, that's something that we can look at as well. Um, can I just quickly ask, which country are you based in? In the US? No, obviously not. In the US? Okay. So in the US, you've got multiple gateway providers, so we should give you all of that uh, data, um, and it shouldn't be a problem. Uh, Visa just recently, well, not so recently now, but Visa has also bought a gateway which we are now launching in market, which will allow you to do... Uh, Moto in the way that it's been designed, uh, recurring billing transactions, and it'll give you a much more robust fraud management filter system as well. They're one of the, the first pioneers of launching that product uh, in this region is actually Network International who are here, but we are looking um, to take that around to other banks across the region. So if there is anyone here that uh, is in a country that, it, uh, that would like to have further information about the CyberSource Gateway, Please let me know, and then the, but that way we can go and talk to your acquiring banks. All right, one more. Well, uh, thank you very much. My question is, yeah, closer. Okay, um, like, why are we not looking at cases like Mpesa in Kenya and how it's working? I like how it's oh, like Mpesa, by the way, is a company that is partnering with Safari, the mobile network in Kenya, to basically facilitate cash payment through mobile, which I think what you guys have alluded to. But if we're not like, if we're not like, like sort of, we always look at like what is working in the West, but not necessarily what's working also in developing countries and kind of can adapt to it because they have similar infrastructure or similar sort of challenges. And I think we can learn a lot from them. Then we just like look at the West and what it does. I think it's also very important that we look at like what is working in developing countries as well. And I don't know if you, any of you looked at Mpesa and what it what it's doing uh, in Kenya. Thanks. Anybody want to comment? Anybody? Do you want to comment? What? Basically, like, why don't we do stuff like Mpesa and that kind of stuff? Like, look at developing countries for. So why don't we look at like developing countries for innovation as opposed to looking at the West? Try not kind of degrade down or, or aspire to like the West, but look at from payment perspective, but look at developing countries as trying to take some of the solutions mm -hmm. or borrow some of the solutions from there in terms of money transfer, payments, and that types of thing. Anybody want to take that one? Um, so I think just a quick answer on that one is that that is something that is part of our strategy going forward. Uh, the challenge with that, again, is uh, adoption and developing a merchant network, which is in terms of your funding in and funding out. So again, these ideas are very good. It's got to work for the region. And uh, in short, I think it's something you're going to see a lot more in developing countries, especially in the Gulf. All right. Thanks, everybody. And thanks for the questions. I know it's uh, a big challenge on the audio side. so. 
Um, thanks, everyone, for bearing with us. I hope you heard of at least half of what was said. Um, but, you know, I think, uh, I think what's great is opportunities for everybody that's here is that, you know, we covered a few things. But what's fantastic is that if you're looking to sell on Souk or looking to become the next Souk or look at some of the challenges, not just around payments or logistics, Ronaldo's here all day. If you're in the UE looking for, you know, acquire, you have questions either as a customer or a pending customer for Network International, Ballo's here all day. If you're looking at some of the learnings and things that's going on in, in, in Europe and, and South America things too, and some of the things we can potentially bring here, Cyril's here all day. If you're looking, whether you're a cashew customer or maybe a cashew customer or you think it's too expensive or whatever, Martin's here all day to answer why is cashew so expensive a few more times. But uh, and if you have any questions about, I don't think it's expensive, it's okay. But, uh, and if you have any questions, Visa, you know, what are the issues around cross-border, cross-border fees, currency conversion, declines, uh, moto accounts, two-party accounts, two-party and five-party accounts, three-party merchant accounts, all these things and whatever, Stephen, happy to help you out. So thanks, everybody on the panel. Can we have a quick round of applause for everyone on the panel, please, for, for participating? <laughs> thanks, everybody.